Hey everyone, it's Jonna, the Furby Crafty Girl. I apologize for the noise in the background. I have some road construction going on in front of my house. So if you can hear that, I apologize. If I wait for them to be done, I will not get any video done. So I am going to do a little crafting session today and showing you how to use all the paper rolls that you have been purchasing and whatever. Uh, one of the ones I have is masking paper from Lowe's, like I shared in one of my videos. This is joint tape from uh, Lowe's. This uh, is for drywall. There is no string or thread or anything like that in it. And then the other one is a flat paper, not the heat printed one. It's just a flat paper um, roll for a calculator. Uh, anyway, so I have those three rolls that we're going to be working with. And we're going to be doing a couple of different things. And I'm going to show you how I'm using them. I pulled a lot of permanent ink. The reason why I like to use permanent ink on this is because right now while I'm crafting, I don't know how I'm going to use these things. So best to just uh, use some permanent ink so that if later I want to use it, it use the sheets down on something that is going to be wet, like add acrylic or anything that I won't have to worry about the ink moving. So try to get some permanent ink if you're going to be following following along. All right, the next thing I have picked is I've gotten a few stamps. So I'm gonna to try to get through this pretty quick. I just easily grabbed, these were some Stamper Anonymous Tim Holtz collections, and I just quickly grabbed three of those that were sitting on the front. Some other items that I have are, of course, a stamp block. I have several stamp blocks. Some of these actually still have stamps on them. So I may end up adding some labels to it. And then I have a couple of other different uh, clear acrylic stamp blocks and then you will also need some I'm using craft bond this just because these were on my desk you want to use something that is oh I can't use these these are repositionable so forget that idea I'm going to use instead I've got the Tombow Glue Stick Acid Free Stronghold Washable Safe for Children. This is a good one. I don't know what happened to my Uhu glue. I stashed it somewhere when I was cleaning out my area, trying to clean my desk off, and I can't find it. But the Tombow one works just as well. So I'm going to be using that one. And how, oh, the other thing I'm, you need is get your scraps. I know everybody has a thing of scraps. And uh, this is mine. Oh my gosh, I have so many from like all different kinds of projects in here. So you want to definitely get all your little strips and your colors and everything like that out. Like I have some old doily. There's some watercolor paper in here, which I probably will not use for this because like I said, it will end up moving. I don't know what kind of watercolor this was. I guess I could try to see if it moves. If I had a water brush here, but I don't, and I don't have any water. So yeah, uh, I've got my hint water I'm drinking next to me, but it's cherry flavored, so I don't really want to <laughs> dip into that. But anyway, so I will try that out later. I probably won't use that today. And I have like different magazine. I mean, whatever. Just get your scraps out and come on, let's play. The other items I have, oh, I don't know what was just in there. Uh, I do have some printed wallpaper just for some color in case I didn't have any in here. I just was testing out. I got a new printer and I was testing this out. It is a laser printer. So I know that these will not bleed and uh, move around the color. So I did that uh, some, of some vintage wallpaper I had. I was kind of playing around with my new printer to see how that would work out. Okay, so first what we want to do is, now, this is called masking paper. I find it, you can find it over in the lumber area of your DIY store. Mine is Lowe's. And you can use it, I'm just going to make a page right now real quickly. So I'm going to do it as if I was using this in a journal, right? So this is how I would do it. This actually is, uh, I think, I believe it was nine inch. They do have a 12 inch, but I think nine inch works well uh, in journals. So here's the six inch mark, and I'm just gonna come in that six inch mark. Okay, I thought I could tear it that way. There it goes. And I'm just going to 
here. And of course I have a, <clears throat> a piece of strip. And with this, what I'll end up doing, wow, that was not good. Well, let me just tear across this way, make it a little bit shorter. But this is really strong paper. I was shocked at how strong this paper was for as thin as it is. It's just a nice, nice weight. And so the curl goes the other way. I'm going to fold it against the curl so it won't keep curling on me. That's a little trick with curling paper. Do you have any curling paper? And I'm going to do this as just a page. So I think what I'll do first is do some background stamping, which I've got some numbers here. This would be a good one to use. And let's just do a little bit of background. I will use that for Savine. This one I think is mist, called something mist. A morning mist. So I think what I'm gonna do is just stamp it a couple of times like that. And then I've got my little background. I'm just going to work on maybe doing a cluster. So this whole roll of paper was under $5 at mine. So that's going to be the background of it. And then let's go in here. And I have some of this in my scraps. I'm just going to kind of do a theme about numbers, I guess. And let's put that on there. I work intuitively. I just stick it down. I do not have time to sit and plan it out. I don't plan it out. I'm just, plus right now for this, just demonstration purposes, but I'm not, I just work intuitively. I see this in here, this little magazine image. This is a good time to get your scraps. Out. I should be using my glue book for this. And what else do I have? So I have some fussy cuts in here that I have not used. These came out of a really cool magazine. Um, it was a stamp. I think I showed it in one of mine. I think it was a stamp magazine or something chicken. Uh, those images are a little bit big for what I want, but they would have been fine for background image. Ooh, here's a little bit of texture. Add this in. This is neutral. A little bit of texture. This is some embossed, some embossed handmade paper. So what I would do is, so I just add a little cluster to the bottom. Also, if you want to, a lot of people are making these cluster master boards, so they're just working on a big sheet. This is a great dimension to work on, very doable, and you could just do these little clusters all along, you know, on the paper. So we could try doing some of that. Here's like a round image I can cut out. I have some scissors. This again came out of some magazine. I don't know. This is. And when I mix like magazine images with other images, like if this, this is flat, I'll add some matte medium on top when I'm done. And that will take the shine off of my images because some, I don't, I don't know. I'm not, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't really use a whole lot of, uh, of shiny, shiny images. Okay, so this came out of the picture frame that I showed you uh, from one of my hauls. So I'm going to use that because I like the color. And it's very brittle because I think that image was probably from the 70s. Is that that in the back? I like the lettering. And the coin. I need something a little lighter in here and i'm not gonna go crazy with all of this oh here's some dictionary paper let's see when you pull off go ahead and just make another one when you pull that stuff off all right let's see i'm gonna add this in 
like so. And I'm gonna cover over that, but keep that gold color. And then I'm gonna add in, what else I got in here? I guess I'm gonna go with this. I guess I'm going, oh, I have some music paper. So even just to do something small, that's too much of the same color. But to add that in and add that in there. Oh my goodness, I was watching, uh, I think her name is 49, 49, uh, 47, 49 <laughs> dragonflies the other day. And this top down collage glue, gluing idea, oh my gosh, is so great because I have the worst memory for like when I lay something down, I forget what I did. Um, yeah, so this just, that was such a great idea because I, like I said, I'll glue it down. I mean, I'll lay it down, but then I forget how I put it together. And then I'm like, shoot. So anyway, so you get the idea. Okay, that is another way that you could do, do this, right? You can, oh, well, hello. is that you can collage on it and do a master board. Okay, and then let me finish this up. I'm gonna add some sepia, I guess. And let's grab, uh, how about a number on the one. Let's do it on this side. I don't really need to see where it's going. I need to stamp it once because um, I haven't used this stamp set. I bought these when they came out and then I just never used it. Okay, so there's that. Kind of just faded into the background. Um, that's all right though, oh, it'll just add to the background. And then on this one, I need to do more like a background stamp. So here's some small numbers, let's do that one. Something in this one's called potting soil. Sticking again with that neutral. It's so loud out there. <laughs> okay, and we'll just do it there. And yeah, maybe I'll add some over there. Okay, and that's how we will do that. And then when you wanna use it, so say you even use this as a page, right? When you wanna use it, you just cut around the image like so, and you've got this really cool craft background, neutral if you want it. This is neutral right now. Little cluster for to put actually like, Instead of directly doing it on the page, but you could add it to a page. I don't know that I would add it on a craft page unless I put something else behind it. Like if I added in a little more to it, right? Then it would pop out. So that's how you can use this craft roll one way. Give you some ideas. And then I've got this tape right here. And I think what I'm going to do is, and I know I have done the uh i have done on this roll i've done uh where you do a whole collage thing going down where it's all different layers and stuff but i think on this one i might just do uh i don't think i have any alpha stamps that's my only issue oh wait yes i do i may just do like random Alphas and numbers on it. That would be fun. Let's see. 
reviews. So let's do that. Take this. And let's put a piece of paper down underneath it. Now, in order to get rid of the curl, what do you do? You curl back the other way and it will lay flat then. Okay. Let's put this underneath it so I don't stamp on my background I'm using right now. Um, I can't, I'm not using the blocks because they are not down. However, I'm going to use my glue page, I think, to ink it and then pick it up. And let's try doing it so you guys can see it. I will do it in this potting soil. I need to get some of the uh, cling foam that I can add to this. I believe I can get it through a ranger if I'm not mistaken. I think they sell sheets of it. But you know, for a collage, it doesn't matter. And this is just going to be a random alphabet. So let's just put it down on there. And let's do some. Numbers and alpha. Okay, super fun way to get a background on this one is just to use stamps and that will give you the background. Maybe I'll do one more right here. I'm not saying that this is archival. I'm not sure, so you don't have to email me. I don't know uh, if joint paper is archival so i wouldn't use it in probably with like anything that you want to keep forever but if it's just going to go in a junk journal why not and there is my background and then i may just use okay so remember i told you i'm a little craft paper snob i'm really big about my craft paper and not all craft paper is made alike and it's not all the same color so i this one right here is the state it's from staples um it is their bags that they have over in the copy center so if you go make a copy they give you these bags and this is lovely craft paper and it's a lighter shade so see lighter shade of craft paper but this 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 is great makes great uh craft paper, collage paper. So just FYI, if you have to go to the copy center and make some pictures, make some copies, make one copy and take it out in a bag. Don't take the bags. Okay, then on top of this, we can just work in a long strip or you can even just, you know, cut it and use this as, you know, a background on another page. So let's go with um, taking out, I'm just tearing out an image from an old dictionary and we will use this as a background and just create a long strip of collage uh let's see i can use this flower up here and put that in there you don't even have to stick to the size of the of the paper oops oopsie there. and then uh let's see i need some 
good. Oh wait, I have some Avery labels. Uh, some vintage Avery labels I got the other day. Some small ones. I wonder if I can, I wonder if, let me see, I thought I had that little tiny, I do. I wonder if this fits on there, wouldn't that be great? It does not, but part of this one does. So let's do that. I'm gonna use this bright blue. So I'd like to get that whole edge on there. Yeah, that's better. There, okay. Then, let's see. So what I'll do with this one is I will just add it in like that at the top and there somewhere. And that's kind of how you can work through your scraps and use this long, long uh, paper tape, right? So then you do the same thing. You just glue and do collage on the tape and then you have it all set to use down the side of a page if you want. And um, you can even, you know, make rolls. So let's put this down on the paper. Ah. Like so. And then let's go with this piece of wallpaper. Like so. And I probably should be using a card instead to push this stuff down. So hold on. Need a card. Make sure that's sitting down really nice. And I can add, I'm just going to tear that edge off, add this in at the top. And uh, what else? I got in my little scrap paper. So, you know, this is. Uh, this is just another great way of using up your scrap. Just pull your scrap page over. Okay, see, like, look, I've got a girl here. Um, let me, I can fussy cut her out. She'd be perfect to use. Just this little girl. So all the small images that you have that you haven't used, this is a great way to use up your small, small images and your scraps. And I know a lot of people have, you know, do these do these. I was just giving you options for different paper, um, uh, you know, to use that I have found. And so, let's see, I can put her right here, like so. And yeah, just continue to build. And then you have this really cool uh, strip of collage. Okay, so that's how I would use this you could use this cut it use it as a belly band or um along the edge of a page let's see okay so that's that one and then for this tape i would use i would do the same thing like we did this on another on another one and you just do the same similar thing that i did here where you just kind of collage on top of it or just do fun backgrounds just to have like just crazy stamped backgrounds and don't even collage over it and then pull it off and use it in, you know, in, in collage. Hey, it's Jonna the preppy, preppy. Blah. Oh my gosh. Thank you.